Good morning, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Forgotten Favorites. The show we're going to do, yes, we're going to do it all throughout the month of August, each and every morning. Uh, I heard all of your comments yesterday, or I should say I read all of your comments yesterday, and uh, we've got a pretty loyal following for a show like this. So you know what? We're going to keep it going throughout the month of August. Doesn't matter how many people watch or don't watch, we're going to keep it going. Then what we're going to move into, I've decided that what I'm going to do going forward after August is I'm going to give Forgotten Favorites a once a month slot. It'll be like a half hour, 45 minute show where I'll talk about a bunch of kind of forgotten favorites, some little known gems, some obscurities and rarities. Uh, so that'll be a regular once a month program going forward. But for this month, each and every day, a single kind of release from the vault, so to speak, uh, obscurities from my collection uh, that cover all the different genres that we have here on the channel. So today we're going to talk about the second album from U.S. speed metal act Agent Steel, released in 1987, Unstoppable Force. Released on Combat Records, uh, like I said, March of 1987, it was recorded at Morris Sound Recording Studios in Tampa, Florida. All right, so that's that was like a popular place just a couple years later with all like the underground, like upcoming death metal bands, right? Um, and mastered at uh, Criteria Studios in Miami, Florida. So this is a really cool album, a really cool band that just you never hear about anymore. Uh, the band is comprised of uh, John Cyrus on vocals, Juan Garcia on guitars, Bernie Versailles on guitars. You may remember Bernie. He did a, a little some stints with Fate's Warning later on. Uh, Michael Zaputil, Zaputil on bass and Chuck Prothis on drums. So if you've never heard Agent Steel before, they are without a doubt a speed metal band. Uh, speed metal is a term that you don't hear much anymore, but back in the eight, early mid '80s, speed metal kind of was like the precursor to a lot of the thrash stuff. Okay, just just really, you know, raging, ripping guitar riffs. At times, the arrangements could be kind of technical, fast-paced drumming, and usually high register, upper register vocals. Right. Uh, so, my probably the first thing I would want to say for those of you who are new to Agent Steel and specifically this album, imagine a more, a much more speedy early Queen's Reich. So take the EP and the Warning. Those type of vocals, all right? This guy sounds a little bit like Jeff Tate at times. He's got that, that he can do that shrieking thing really, really well. But much, much more fast-paced, frenetic uh, song arrangements. Though not quite as technical as, like, say, Watchtower. Because Watchtower and Queensryche have similarities, but they're, but the arrangements of both bands are completely different, right? Where Watchtower is just fast and furious and uber technical, and Queensryche is, well, Queensryche. So these guys are, sit somewhere in the middle, okay? Very cool stuff. So you've got the, the title track, which kicks it off. Unstoppable Force is just that, an unstoppable force. A great song. The riffs are just absolutely tremendous. The vocals, like I said, shooting to the heavens, man. Uh, he's a really good singer. You know, some people don't like that kind of vocal style, but if, like I said, if you like Jeff Tate and that sort of thing, uh, Midnight from Crimson Glory, certainly not too far off. Uh, then you've got Never Surrender and Indestructive. So the first three tracks on here are just absolutely killing it. Absolutely killing it. Great riffs, great solos, laser light solos. All right, and just really just kick ass heavy metal, speed metal anthems. All right. Then they switch gears a little bit. The last two tracks on side one of the original vinyl, uh, first half of the CD, you've got Chosen to Stay, <clears throat> which is much more moody and melodic, kind of proggy in spots. Think of like same period uh, Fate's Warning. Not, maybe not quite as proggy, but kind of along those lines, the song builds and builds into a nice heavy climax. Then you've got Still Searching, which is more of like a mid-paced, just kind of metal anthem. Big, big, heavy riffing. Really good song. Uh, then Side B of the Vinyl kicks off with Rager, okay, which, again, the, the song perfectly goes along with the title. It is a Rager. It is a fast-paced, just ripping, ripping speed metal track. Uh, from there, you got a cool instrumental. I think it's the longest track on the album, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it is. At uh, just under seven minutes long, "The Day at Guyana" is an instrumental. Really cool. Think of like kind of the instrumentals that uh, Metallica was doing right around the same time, like "Call of Cthulhu" and that sort of thing, and Orion. Very similar. Really cool. Great guitar work. Interesting rhythms. Just good, good stuff. And then you've got uh, "Nothing Left." All right, which is another good, good heavy 
speedy track. And then uh, Traveler finishes it all off in really mellow fashion. It's the shortest song on the album, and it's just very kind of melancholy with like lilting guitar chords and more heartfelt vocals and just a, a way to kind of bring everything down a notch to kind of take the listener out. Uh, if you get the uh, you know the various reissues and remasters, you've got the, some bonus tracks. You've got the, the Swarm is Upon Us, Mad Locust Rising, and uh, Let It Be Done. Uh, day at Guyana. Okay, got a couple couple instrumentals there. For whatever reason, I know there was a reissue that had them doing a cover of a cover of the Ripper by Judas Priest, but it's not on the one that I have. But uh, but yeah, quite good, quite good. Let's, let's just give you a little gander at the, the guys there. Let me uh, open this up. I don't remember what else is all in here. Let's see if we got a better picture of the band. Ah, we got pictures of the bands. All right. These guys, you know, had a nice little career, but they never really broke big. You know, this was on Combat Records, which you'll remember was one of the kind of fledgling underground metal labels at the time. And, uh, you know, they got some attention, Agent Steel, but never really as big as some of the uh, other you know, bands that came out right around them, you know, kind of, kind of along the lines of like Liege Lord, right? It's like bands that just kind of popped up in the, you know, mid eighties. So basically they had Skeptics, Apocalypse in 85, this in 87, Omega Conspiracy in 99. So really you had the first two albums and then nothing for many, many years. Uh, and they've actually uh, released a few uh, since they got back together. So you got Order of the Illuminati in 2003, uh, LA, Alien Enigma in 2007, and apparently they have a new album. I don't know if it's been released or it's going to be released. No Other Gods Before Me here in 2021. I have not heard that, um, and there's lots of demos and things like that. So uh, so pretty interesting band. Like I said, if you like that kind of early or you know early 80s, mid 80s speed metal sound with just really, really top-notch musicianship and that kind of upper register vocal shriek, uh, I think you'll really dig these guys. So uh, yeah, Agent Steel, Unstoppable Force. It is completely an unstoppable force, in my opinion, the best album in their catalog that I've heard. Anyway, I haven't heard every single one of them, but uh, this is definitely an improvement over the debut. Debut is fine too, but this is this is the real deal. So check it out if you haven't. Visit us on the web at www.catrankwilly.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter, of course. We're here on YouTube all the damn time. Stay tuned. We got Martin Popoff coming up this morning for another day at the Funhouse. So uh, and uh, hopefully a few other things happening this weekend, including including the debut of album homework assignment which will be coming to you each and every sunday so stay tuned for that we've got uh rick labonte and jamie laszlo playing together uh on this particular first debut episode they've each given each other an assignment they've had a week to listen to them so uh that'll be coming up on sunday week number two will be myself and martin popoff going at it with uh, jamie moderating week number three we've got uh, eric porter and we've got Armando Venditti coming on board. They've each given each other their assignments and they're hard at work on those. So we've got the first three weeks already planned. I have all sorts of combinations swirling around in my mind. So uh, this should be a really fun show. I'm looking forward to doing this every week. So uh, stay tuned for that and a lot more. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, click on that notification bell so you get updated of all of our content. Uh, we've got the link to the Ko-Fi page below if you want to make a channel donation to help us uh, keep buying more music to talk about and show off and movies for the Monsters Den and all that sort of thing. So that's where that all goes. Um, and then of course the link to our merch page where we've got all sorts of cool Sea of Tranquility shirts and items and coffee mugs and stickers and hats and you name it, as well as comic book user stuff. And then, of course, the link to Sea of Tranquility, the webzine that has now been on the internet for 20 years down below as well. So thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you in a little bit with Martin and then uh, once again tomorrow with another Forgotten Favorite. So uh, take care, everybody. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.